maybe I was live, maybe I'm live now, but I'm gonna reintroduce myself. <laughs> My name's Megan Finn. I'm the artistic director of The Tank. Um, this is the Cyber Tank uh, variety show, uh, which happens every week, uh, Tuesday at uh, four. And um, this is part of our Fast and Furious FNF uh, countdown to the election. And so for our Cyber Tank Friday shows in the weeks leading up to the election, we're doing action hours. And each week we're talking to folks that are activists, artists, um, people that are doing different actions, um, both leading up to the election and, and it, just different act acts of activism that you can do ongoing. Um, so today I'm really excited. I have three guests and I'm gonna add them to the stream, God willing. <laughs> so first, and I will introduce them as, as I'm adding them and that'll be, it'll be a very dramatic effect. So um, first we have Jay Stull, <laughs> did it. Look at that, Jay is here, hi Jay. Hey. Um, we have Ella Rose Cherry next. Oh, I did it. <laughs> and we have Natasha Sinha. Here we go, the four of us, welcome. So um, you three are uh, have recently, in the recent past, be, uh, begun this group amplifying activists together and have been working um, to bring folks together on a weekly basis to find out ways that they can um, be working, helping uh, progressive movements in New York throughout with, as opposed to in spurts around elections, but throughout um, throughout the year. So, hi, welcome. <laughs> and uh, maybe if uh, you, so, we also have we also have big tank love happening here. <laughs> so, so um, maybe you can talk about uh, just introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about who you are before we talk about what you've been doing. So, Jay, do you want to take it away? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm Jay. Uh, thank you for having us on. Um, I'm probably going to let Natasha and Ella do most of the talking. I'm a bit of a behind the scenes fellow uh, in this group, but um, I am, in addition to a member of this trio, also a playwright and a director and um, have a wonderful, lovely relationship with the tank. So thank you, Megan. I'm so happy to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, Ella, do you want to go next? Sure. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that didn't work out. <laughs> Let's try again. Sure. There you are. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Ella Rose Cherry. She, her pronouns. Uh, I am very excited to be at the tank in the pre- COVID times, I spent a lot of time at the Tank. I um, am a co-curator of the Tank Race Cabaret series at the Tank and also uh, was in the season last year with my play, The Seance Machine with Brandon James Glenn. So uh, very happy to be doing something at the Tank right now with uh, with Megan and uh, Jay and Natasha. I mostly write musicals, but I also write other things. And um, I've been a member of activist communities my whole life. So I'm really glad that we're able to do these things together. Um, so that's it. Great. And Natasha? Hello, I'm Natasha. Um, I'm a producer and dramaturg. I haven't been part of the tank before, but I've come to uh, to shows at the tank all the time. Um, I recently was at Signature Theater and will be moving into the position of Associate Artistic Director at Playwrights Horizon soon. Um, I also do a bunch of freelance work and I'm a co-founder of Beehive Dramaturgy Studio. Uh, yeah, and I've just been always interested in the stuff that now Amplifying Activists Together takes action for. Um, but uh, really sort of ramped that up with Ella and Jay, who are incredible, um, over the summer and then moving into what we've been doing since then. Um, so I guess I, I don't know, I, I never really quite call myself an activist, which is maybe just out of respect for the folks who are doing it day in and day out and way more than I am. But I, I do think that producing and dramaturging, um, you know, doing that responsibly kind of embeds that work within it. So uh, so I'm happy to to speak here about whatever can be helpful and to tell folks about about this group that we're running. Great. So, um, so 
you came together around the summer. Can you talk about, um, you, and you started organizing around uh, budget justice, right? Which was the first um, first kind of thing you did. So tell us tell us uh, how you went about that and what are some of the things you were, that thoughts you were having that have guided you in, in trying to get active yourselves and then kind of helped form this, this group? Um. I can jump in. I'm a member of Juice for Racial and Economic Justice, JFRAJ, which is an organization in New York City that has been working for racial and economic justice uh, in the city for like 30 years. And I uh, regularly attend their events um, or do membership activities. And the three to Freedom to Thrive, a uh, part of that campaign um, was focused specifically on anti-police violence and uh, Jews for Black Lives. and. Uh, I have been actively involved with them for many years. And uh, in the spring, um, I started to see uh, folks, especially around when there were uprisings and there was a reaction to George Floyd's murder uh, by the state. I, uh, I started to see folks in the theater community talking about defunding the police. And I had never seen that outside of the activist communities before. I was really, uh, I was really surprised to start hearing that language in a more mainstream space. And uh, I also was thinking about um, how we were so all of, out of work and how the only thing that's gonna save theater is uh, possibly changing the way that our entire country is structured so that there's universal basic income, universal housing and uh, universal health care and a freedom of safety. And so I had been thinking about these things in May and I went to this meeting at JFRED where they were talking about this more mainstream ideas uh, of defunding the police that that might be something we might be able to mobilize people to do in our communities outside of uh, where we normally had um, an ability to do that. And I was like, who's doing this in the theater community? And I was like, surely somebody is doing this in theater. Surely all of these folks there, and you know, and it shouldn't be me. Like I'm not an organizer as Natasha was kind of saying, and I'm, you know, a cis white person. And I was like, I want to follow the people who are doing this. And, uh, but then at the meeting they were like, get 10 friends to call city council. And I was like, okay, well that is something that I can do. And I was knew that Natasha was posting about this and was one of those people. And I said, Natasha, maybe we could, um, maybe we could do like something where we use the signature lobby as like sort of the thing. I was just like, if we had a space, we would do that, right? But we don't have that. So what does that mean? And Jay and I had been talking about these things. And so it just kind of naturally became a thing where Natasha was like, yeah, let's do a phone bank. And I was like, okay, great. We'll just invite all of our friends, not just 10 of them. And I'll kind of pass the ball there. But that was sort of where it came from is that we had all been talking about these things. We'd all been thinking about these things. We knew there was a, a drive in the theater community. Natasha was working on all this stuff that I didn't even know about. And we were just like, we can get 10 friends and it turned into like 400 people. So that was, that's where all we went. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I'll tell us a little bit about how you, how you kind of entered the space and then, um, yeah, and, and where it's led you. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, I was being pulled into a lot of sort of, uh, action spaces, action groups that were trying to do something after the protest started. I happen to be in LA with my partner who works in this stuff all the time. And so to hear the differences between folks who work on this all the time versus theater folks who really, really want to channel everything that they've got into this right now, it was it was clear to me that it felt like we should follow the folks who have been doing this for a long time. And, and when Ella uh, got in touch about, um, you know, everything that she, <laughs> brought to this, I was like, oh, this seems perfect. Let's do something over Zoom since everyone's doing all this Zoom stuff all the time. Let's basically do a phone banking situation. And so we did, I think six or maybe even seven um, Defend NYPD calls in June. Um, and that was just sort of, we just sort of gathered a bunch of people and like 200 plus people came to each of those. And it was really, um, like healing <laughs> to actually have something to do uh, and to actually gather together also in some way, that's obviously not the same as in person, but um, but to gather together. And then so uh, after that sort of didn't reach exactly the, the goal that we wanted, but still did activate a lot of people and raise the visibility of all of this and get people really um, in a different space of understanding about what this means, about what defunding means, we wanted to continue that work. And uh, that's how Amplifying Activists Together sort of grew out of that one month of uh, 
of work together with the three of us and divvying the work up among the three of us felt really good too, because we always talk about how, you know, there's a multiplicity of folks who are working on this and it's never about one person, even if there are definitely very inspiring activists that we have at our events all the time that we internally also talk about all the time because we're just so excited about them. Mm -hmm. um, it really is never about one person. It's always about just how this is for all of us and can be by all of us. And so, uh, yeah, so, so we sort of continue from there and we're continually learning and figuring out the best ways to attract folks, the best ways to take action, um, getting connected to more and more uh, networks and groups. But, um, you know, sort of just sort of just forging forward and uh, trying to practice solidarity together. Jay, can you talk about some of the, so, so you meet weekly, some mostly Friday afternoons, but it, you know, shifts, you know, you re meet on a regular basis and you have guest speakers. So can you talk about the structure, how, how people join? Um, yeah. Can you talk about, and then maybe talk about how it's changed you and your perspective, or if there have been any moments that, um, that have been enlightening uh, coming from these, from these specific speakers? Yeah, uh, so every week, uh, and in October, we've done them every Friday at 1 p.m. Um, we've invited people to a Zoom call uh, that can hold up to a thousand people. Uh, and usually it's about 70, 60 to 70 people, uh, over a hundred RSVP. Um, we encourage our participants to, um, share the link and information about the group with their friends and to spread it kind of like as virally as possible. Uh, we welcome people into the group. Um, the chat is active and we have uh, an introduction to an activist who is working, spearheading, uh, coordinating a campaign uh, that we're seeking to amplify that week. They'll speak for five to 10 minutes. Folks will be able to ask questions in the chat. They'll either be answered in the chat by uh, the person who's visiting or um, on screen, and then we'll pass the uh, camera over to Ella. She will share her screen and walk us all through a phone call. And I think this actually is a really crucial part of what we do. First, I think it's like the most theatrical moment of my week because I never know whether she will get a voicemail or uh, somebody picking up. Um, and she just like walks through the chat. And for a lot of people who come to our groups, uh, this is their first time actually lobbying or calling their representatives. And so it can be kind of, I guess it can be a scary experience or feel like something they really want to avoid. Um, but one thing that uh, we do after Ella makes that call is we mute all of our um, mics and then we can just put the gallery view on and we just see, you know, page after page of people making calls uh, for a particular campaign, a justice campaign. And that I have found is one of the few things I'm clinging to right now is the idea of visualizing other people making these calls and not just watching our, you know, hashtag activism online. <laughs> um, I went ahead and put the tiny URL up there. So tell tell us um, tell us some of the things that you've uh, some of the phone banks or other other things in terms of justice uh, causes that you've focused on so far. Um, sure. So I, one thing that I think we're really focused on is kind of to what Natasha said. Oh, Natasha's that way for me. Um, <laughs> that uh, that we're really interested in being led by the activists who are long time working on this. We don't want to drop in and reinvent the wheel. We don't want to decide that we think that this is a thing that should be addressed. And so we're going to do that. We're much more, uh, we know, we respect the work of these folks who have been um who are on the front lines who are leading and also like for the De defund nypd uh the coalition that we were uh amplifying that we were making calls for is a coalition led by directly affected family members um and so we are just really want to be led by directly affected folks uh while recognizing that many folks in theater and the arts are often um directly led as are directly impacted as well by many of these things certainly we often are um the in when it comes to the economic justice issues in particular for myself um so there's a, a campaign that's been going on which is the fund excluded workers campaign there are folks in 
uh, New York State and New York City who have received zero relief since uh, the pandemic began. They're unemployed. They did not get any of the extra unemployment that came through with the CARES Act. They didn't get the $1,200. There's just been no relief for folks and they've been facing eviction and hunger in our communities. Um, and uh, this may include artists, this may include uh, folks in the cash economy. Uh, and we uh, were very passionate about uh, there was a phone bank to the state legislature to try to get uh, to get this relief. And so we felt very passionately about plugging into that after budget justice, uh, that campaign uh, was sort of wrapping up at that time. And so many of the activists that we knew who had been working on budget justice were also plugging into that campaign. And so we followed them there and started to make calls uh, and were really led by Make the Road New York, which is an organization um, that's part of the coalition that was trying to fund excluded workers. And as we've continued to make calls for that, there are related issues to worker justice and to these um, to issues of, uh, of of worker justice, I guess is the right way to say it. Uh, and so we've started to um, expand and also calling for those. One of those is the walking wall trans ban. Uh, we're trying to get that repealed. That's another initiative that Make the Road and other um, organizations are working on. There's this law that's been on the books since the 70s that allows the police to harass uh, trans women and they mostly uh, target trans women of color uh, just for being out and walking on the streets um, as many other folks do every day without being bothered by the cops. And the political will is there to repeal it and they won't call it for a vote. And so we've been trying to pressure that. And this week we're calling to um, plug into the Housing Justice for All cancel rent campaign. I'm gonna uh, let other folks talk about this as well, but these are some of the, the issues that our, um, the organizers that we trust and are following are leading us on. And so we are trying to support that work. And that's why it's amplifying because uh, these are the activists and we're literally trying to listen to what they are saying they need folks to call about and then gathering folks to call for those things. Um, as best you can, can you talk, can you um, sum up the cancel rent and, and what you're focusing on this, this with this next, uh, next iteration? Natasha, I'll throw it at you. <laughs> I can um, I can jump in while Natasha's, uh, but but don't make me big. Just let Natasha signal. Don't make me big. I won't. I'll keep you. I'll keep you. <laughs> and then Natasha. It's so hard watching this because all I see is my face talking at my face. It's like <laughs> a literal nightmare for me. Um, uh, I wish I could just not see myself speak at all. Um, but uh, quickly, uh, cancel rent, which we're talking about this week, is a a uh, multi, many year campaign um, led predominantly by Housing Justice for All uh, and seeks to do a couple things and represent a couple things. It's a coalition movement, Housing Justice for All, uh, meaning that it's a group of a number of different activist organizations that represent tenants in New York, that represent um, uh, homeless people, people who are in precarious housing, um, and they seek to uh, end evictions and rent spikes uh, and, and um, uh, and, and establish housing as a human right for New Yorkers in the state as a whole. You spoke to that much better than I would have anyway, so. <laughs> You're perfect. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just add that, um, you know, if, if folks are listening to this and, and you feel like sort of overwhelmed by how many, how many different things there are, um, you're, totally not alone. <laughs> it's overwhelming how much there is to do. And that's that's kind of why, um, that's also an idea behind Amplifying Activists Together is that this is really like uh, a way to, if you have one hour a week to just like dedicate yourself to, you know, just like commit to coming every week for this one hour. Um, and we, what we've started doing is put a document together of multiple steps so that um, the calling scripts, the numbers, how exactly to go about everything, in what order, um, that's all laid out for you. Uh, and as Jay was saying before, like Ella will walk us through the, the calling script since that often seems like the most intimidating portion of it. But then we work through all of these. So fund excluded workers, repealing the, the walking all trans ban, now cancel rent and anything else that we might add on. Like we were doing um, some other calls earlier uh, that we sort of added on in like an emergency state because there's always a lot going on here. Um, and they're all interconnected, so they all are relevant here. Um, and that's also something we're trying to 
help frame. And especially, I mean, our, our guest speakers are so great at doing that um, for everyone there. And it's really inspiring to know that there is strategy forward and that there are movements that have existed and that we can now plug into. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I guess I just wanted to say like, even if it sounds overwhelming and you're not, you're not familiar with these movements yet or like these names or whatever, um, you should totally come to these events because we really try to like step-by-step step lay it out for you. And then these are just resources that you have also that you can use whenever you want and share with whomever, all of it, like none of it's proprietary. We really just wanna, again, we're really just amplifying what's already out there um, and channeling and streamlining any of it uh, so that so that we can all take that action together and like add to the volume of, um, of voices, you know, calling for, for justice in these ways. It, and I'll say that as like an independent artist in theater, it always feels, has felt, especially pre-pandemic, very overwhelming to try to make time also for activism or to make time to understand everything that's going on, to know whether or not anything is really useful. I was like, is it even useful to make these phone calls? Um, and what I've learned just by us doing this and also like sort of responding to being asked to this is that these phone calls do make a difference when they're to the state legislature they do make a difference when they're to the state council they're they their thing that the activists are want more people to do and they don't have 60 people showing up every week to their phone banks because they are doing all these other things they don't have time to organize that necessarily or they do but it's it's like an extra thing that they have to do on top of all of this other stuff and uh for me like committing to things long term always felt scary because you're an artist you don't know what's going to happen like what if i get a gig what if i do a thing and so I really um, like the sort of way in which it's like, we're asking folks to come on Friday if they can. We're asking them to make the commitment while they have the capacity to do that and kind of go within their own capacity. And that also um, that it's that it's something that, that we haven't just decided is useful. It's something that the folks who are gonna be doing this, who were doing this before are telling us is useful and who are gonna keep doing this no matter what happens with theater. If we go back to being able to make shows in person or if our Zoom show happens or whatever, these folks are gonna keep doing this thing and this is what they are asking of us. And so that helps me with my feeling overwhelmed about it because it's a clear instruction from somebody who's like doing this all the time that this is how I can help them. And they tell us repeatedly how helpful it is to them to have this and how excited they are to come and talk to our group just because they're because what we're doing is, is supporting the work that they're doing. And so um, I think that that's an important thing to think about because it can feel completely overwhelming and it can also feel like everything is futile. <laughs> um, and this is really helps me with, um, with not feeling that way because we, uh, because we are in conversation with people who represent us. My, you can hear me, right? My, yeah. I'm being a little, my thing, I'm getting slowed down a little bit. So I popped out, I popped back in, uh, <laughs> here I am. Maybe I'll be a voice, which is a, a voice. Uh, Did we look no, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> um, so isn't this great? Isn't this just perfect? Can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay, well, you can just see me frozen every once in a while and just hear my voice. Um, so I'm wondering if, uh, yeah, so if you can talk about some of the nuts and bolts about making these calls, um, I think it sometimes can be intimidating for folks. Although, uh, you know, these people work for us. <laughs> You know, that's the thing, right? These representatives really, they work for us and they're they are waiting to hear from us about these issues. Um, it's part of the, it's the gig for them. So can you talk a little bit about how you, like maybe even give an example of, of making a, making calls and how you, uh, you get people, how you might, how you, someone comes to one of these, these Zoom calls and what is the experience? What, how, how would they go about participating? Well, I guess I could say, Ella, if you want to like, if you want to get geared up, um, one thing that we'll, what we would do is we would distribute uh, our documents so everybody could pull it up on their screen. And then Ella will share her, uh, we do it on Zoom, so you can share your screen on Zoom. And, I think um, I can share my screen here too. Can you share your screen here? Okay. There's a little thing. And uh, so she literally just walks through the script that we have prepared to demonstrate that like, you know, if it's your first time calling, you can literally just read the script to the person. So 
oftentimes we'll have a link that can automatically, you know, send your uh, call to a number of different folks, or we have analog version, just type in the phone number and we have those listed. Uh, and we have an order of listed uh, people that we'd like you to reach out to. And then almost always you're getting a voicemail. Sometimes you're getting a staffer you are never getting the person you're calling. So any intimidation about that can sometimes be a little mitigated by realizing you're just gonna get a voicemail. Um, and then we just ask people to do it after Ella demonstrates it. Natasha, do you wanna say anything? <laughs> um, hmm, not sure what to add there. I mean, what, what, we, usually, uh, what we usually try to do is really keep it as um, clear and direct all the different steps that you take uh, on that document. So technically you could do this on your own and we encourage folks to do it beyond the hour that we've got. We just like doing it together because again, we're we're missing the, <laughs> the uh, gathering ability that we used to have, especially within the theater. Um, and so what we do is we take it to, we, we do it all together and everyone is on mute. So no one will hear you no, if you stumble, like you're not doing it in front of people. Um, well, Ella is, but <laughs> but she's always perfect. And uh, it's really helpful to hear different versions of how it goes. Also, I think people who have been to multiple events, which we have a lot of repeat people now, which is amazing, um, have said, have, I actually don't know if I've told you this, Ella, but like have said that it's really interesting to like watch Ella every week um, and see how it goes differently each time. And um, and uh, how you sort of navigate that and how you can totally rely on the script so you're not on your own, which feels like a bit of a um, helpful thing. Uh, so yeah, I guess we should maybe just walk through the script and, and show folks how it goes. Yeah. Um, we have a guide usually. Uh, I'm not sure how to post that for you all, but it's it's basically tinyurl.com slash aat dash guide dash October. And if you, if you want to pull that up, that's basically what it looks like. It's just all the steps that we take and calling is one of them. It's usually the very first one, which Ella will walk you through now. Yeah, I'm gonna see how this goes. I'm gonna try to share my screen. I'm gonna press this share the screen button. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, we'll see if it doesn't, we'll see if it's gonna let me do, uh, oh, it will let me do this. All right, this is exciting. Can. Can you see the, do we know? Oh, we can see it, excellent. So I often start this, I don't do this perfectly every time, that's kind of the point. I start this by saying, cause I'm not a long time, as we've said, I'm not an organizer, I write musicals. Um, I am a regular person who wants to help. And so that, uh, it, you know, and I'm intimidated by phone calls too. So that's partially why we do this is because it doesn't have to be your job to be able to do it. Um, and we have this document that we put together that folks can join us with. And if you want to join us right now, make a call, uh, you could do that. If you want to do it later, you can. And if you don't want to, uh, maybe come join us Friday. Um, and so you'll come to this document that we have. And if you scroll down uh, to step one, make calls, there's a thing that's in bright yellow. And that's the calling tool. Today, I'm going to make a call to the legislature of New York to demand that they reconvene and help us. Uh, basically, they are not in session. They could be. They could be passing legislation to fund excluded workers. They could repeal the walking wall trans ban. They could be getting things done. We have 120 billionaires in New York State. Uh, if we taxed them with this marked market tax that uh, I'm going to talk about in the script, we would make enough money and then some to fund everything we needed to fund in New York State. And we would just be funding their earnings since the beginning of the pandemic. Or taxing their earnings since the beginning of the pandemic would be enough to fund everyone who hasn't received any relief. And so that's the thing that I'm going to call about. And so if you go to the link here, it will take you to this page. My computer's going to be slow about it. This is from Make the Road New York, the folks that we're amplifying. Uh, they have a script, but we tend to use our script. We find it easier for new folks. Um, it asks you for your name. Put your address in. I encourage folks to put their full address in. The first time I did it, I put just my zip code and I got the wrong reps. Um, this is a calling tool. You put your phone number in and you come down. If you don't want to get emails and text messages about the campaign or if you already are, you can uncheck these boxes. You'll click find legislators and it will take you to this page where it tells you who you'll be calling today. Governor Cuomo, who we know they don't often pick up. They, um, in fact, ask people to fax them, which is a thing that we have in our tool. You can send them a fax. Uh, and then my uh, assembly member Felix Ortiz and my senator 
for the state, Kevin Parker, and then the uh, Speaker of the Assembly, Carl Hasty, who is a real target right now, and the Senate Majority Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, who's also a big target. These are the folks who need to pull uh, uh, to pull the legislative session back so that we, they can vote on these things that will help us. And so you'll just scroll down and you'll hit the call me. And then I go back to our particular, um, our script. And now I'm getting this call, so I'll answer and everyone can hear. Thank you for taking action. Join us in fighting for an excluded worker in Fund to support communities who have been left out of state and federal relief efforts during this crisis. We'll connect you with your representative shortly. Please then, press star to be connected now. And so then I press star to go to the next call, and then it, I'll hang up. But if you're calling at home, you could press star. It would take you to the next call after that. You don't have to hang up. We'll now connect you to Carl Hesty. After your call is done, press star, and we'll connect you to your next official. Hi, my name is Ella. I live in Brooklyn and I'm calling to ask Speaker Hasty to reconvene the legislative session and commit to passing the fund excluded workers tax and repealing the walking wall trans ban. Uh, I'll be connected to the proper line where you can leave all the information. One moment, please. All right, thank you. So this happens to me regularly that I get passed on to voicemail. Reading. You have reached the New York State Assembly. Mm -hmm. Speaker Cop Hasty's correspondent. Read the script exactly. With a detailed message. Or after. add things yourself. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. Hi, my name is Ella and I live in Brooklyn and I'm calling to demand that Speaker Hasty reconvene the legislative session and commit to passing the fund excluded workers tax and repealing the walking wall trans ban. The need for action is so much more acute now than it has ever been. It is morally wrong not to represent the people of New York in their darkest hour of need. This spring and summer, New Yorkers lost their jobs and health insurance, got sick, cared for ill family and friends, and mourned loved ones lost to COVID-19. Excluded workers sustained the same losses, but without access to unemployment insurance. Meanwhile, New York billionaires made a windfall in the stock market. This is unjust. For decades, trans New Yorkers have been harassed, assaulted, and unfairly arrested by police under a flimsy 1970s era law that disproportionately affects our black and brown trans friends and fellow citizens. This is racist and transphobic. We are demanding that the New York State Legislature signal to the citizens of New York that justice is guiding its legislative session. First, by passing a mark-to-market tax on New York billionaires' earnings, which would generate $23 billion in state revenue this year alone, enough to provide emergency income for all excluded New Yorkers in crisis right now. And second, by repealing an archaic law long used in racist and transphobic ways that criminalizes trans lives in New York. I know that the speaker says that he's working for the people, but I don't understand why at this moment we're in such dire need. The legislature is doing nothing. As a member of the theater community where we can't work and where we can't do the thing that we love because of the virus and because of inaction by the federal government, the New York state government has said that they're doing something for us where the federal government has let us down. And yet you're not doing it. You won't go back to session. You won't pass these bills. You won't help us out. And so I'm calling to urge you to pass pass Assemblymember De La Rosa's bill, A10414, to tax the unwarranted and unnecessary wealth hoarding by New York billionaires. And I'm also urging you to pass Assemblymember Pollan's bill, A00654, to repeal the walking wall trans ban. As a member of the queer community and with the Supreme Court justice that was confirmed last night, it's more important than ever that we protect everyone in the queer community. And we really need our state government to step up for us right now. Thank you. And then I will hang up the phone. Um, you could press star and go on to your next call. As you can see, I read the script exactly when I felt more comfortable doing that. When I felt moved to say something that applied to me personally, I said it. 
Um, you can do any of those things. You can change the script and put it in your own language if you want. If you feel nervous and you want to read the script and not do a cold read, I never do a cold read of these things the first time. I always practice. I mean, I wouldn't go on stage and do a cold read if I didn't have to, and I certainly wouldn't call a stranger with a cold read. Um, if it feels too long, you can jump right to the end and just ask about the bills. If you feel uncomfortable talking to somebody who's a real person who picks up and you don't want to read the whole script, you can read the whole script anyway because it's their job to listen to you. Uh, you don't have to change it, but if you wanna to jump to the end and ask about the bills, you can do that. If your senator or assembly member supports the bill, you can thank them for their support and ask them to pressure the legislature to come back and vote on it. Their support means nothing if they're not gonna take a vote and they're not in session. And if there's something particularly important to you about this uh, bill that speaks out or there's something in the script that really affects you personally, as a member of the theater community, as a member of the queer community, uh, as somebody who received aid and feels like why didn't everybody receive that, as somebody who didn't receive aid and needs it, all of these things um, are things that you can put in to make it more personal. Or if that terrifies you, don't say any of it. <laughs> Just say what's written. Um, and also Make the Road New York has their own script that's on the calling tool, you could use that. It's not so much about what exactly you say as it is that your voice is counted. And if you leave a voicemail, that's just as good because your voice, um, you will be counted. They count voicemails, they count every call that comes in because they take that onto the floor, they use that to pressure the speaker, to pressure the Senate Majority Leader to bring folks, uh, to bring the vote about by saying, look at how many people are calling about this. And in a lot of times I feel like the our national reps, they don't always care or they don't always listen to us. There are lots of big money lobbyists. There's not, uh, I, I mean, not to say that you shouldn't call your national reps, obviously you should, but for me, I often feel like it's much more available to call my local officials. And so that's why, um, that's one of the reasons why I like doing this. And, you know, it's also hard to call voters directly. I do some of that in the election, just calling like people. That's very hard and intimidating and can feel like, well, I'm bugging somebody and it's not their job to do this. Uh, again, that's an important thing to do and you can do that. But what's so rewarding about doing this and what we hear from the folks who come to the phone banks that's so rewarding about doing this is that these folks, it is their job to listen to us. These folks, they their local elections are not like national elections. Our vote really matters if they don't do what we want them to do, we can primary them. Uh, my assembly member who's gonna be going in came to my door this year. She knocked on my door to try to get me to sign the thing well before she ended up getting elected. And now she's gonna be going to the state assembly. Like this is, a, we have a much more of an ability to be in touch with these folks. And the other thing is that these are Democrats. Everybody on that list that I just had, these are all Democrats. We don't have to win them over a blue wave, right? We, I mean, we do in the country, but in, in New York state, we have a blue wave. We have a blue legislature. It's not a question of like, oh, these Republicans. It's a question of the people who, um, you know, if you want progressive politics, uh, these are the folks who say that they want that too. And so the only thing, like, it's kind of, I don't know how to kind of tap that off because that's just sort of, I get very like passionate about it. But I think that, you know, folks can come call with us. <laughs> so people can join. So you have these guides. And so folks can join you when you are making the calls or they can also do it on their own time, right? So whenever they, you know, yeah. and this is a really easy way that folks can look at what's happening and, and figure out how, you know, when they can make the calls. Um, I, um, yeah, I think it's really uh, important right now because, you know, there's such a big push up to this election, obviously. And yeah, people are, doing a lot of volunteering and, and yeah, phone banking <laughs> in swing state is, you know, that's pretty intense. But I also think that like theater artists are pretty, there's a lot of skills that we have that we're not using right now that make it like, for instance, you reading that script, right? There's a lot of people that are really uncomfortable with picking up the phone and delivering a script. Well, if you're not, we need you, right? <laughs> We need you to start to do this work because it's it's something that comes at this point is easy for you. Um, and it's not that many calls to call your representatives on all these issues, right? It's like, you know, it doesn't, it's not like going to take, it's, it's something you can do ongoing as we get kind of after this election and you want to keep staying, uh, staying active and, and helping. Um, and I think that's gonna be really critical for people to keep doing. And one thing about that too, uh, about 
being the ones to call. One of our organizers, Angela Solis of Make the Road, um, has told us that a lot of the membership of Make the Road New York um, and like immigrant membership and immigrant populations who are calling may not, um, English may not be their first language. They may not feel as comfortable or as listened to when they call sometimes in some of the membership organizations. And so if English is your first language, if you feel comfortable speaking on the phone in English to the reps, it's not right, it's not fair, it's not just, it's despicable that you maybe listen to more. I hate that that is a thing, but the reality is, is that is a thing. And so there are things that you may take for granted or that you may, uh, as Megan said, you may have many skills that you don't realize are as valuable um, and that are being asked for by the organizers for us to contribute with. Um, speaking of, yeah. Oh, so yeah, go ahead. I'll just add, um, you know, like I I'm a theater person, but I hate phone calls and I hate <laughs> all of that. Um, and yet I think because, because the information's laid out, um, it actually, it actually still is pretty easy to do. Like just reading out that script, like Ella was saying, there's so many different versions of how to do it. Um, so I'd say even if you're not comfortable doing it, like I wasn't comfortable doing it for a long time until I finally just went for it. Um, and I, I think this space sort of eases you into that really well. Um, we've heard that from a lot of folks who hadn't phone bank, phone bank before and then ended up doing it for other organizations and other groups as well. So um, so I'll say whether or not you're comfortable doing it, this this is something to try if you're if you're interested in using your voice in this way. Um, and it's so much simpler than you actually think it is um, in terms of what each step is. It's actually, it's really just like doing your part and then pulling friends in to do it as well and making it consistent. Uh, for a long time, I thought it was way more complicated than that just because I would go down rabbit holes about the issues themselves and about like what's happening in like the political world about like surrounding it, um, which is all true. But I think sometimes that that sort of uh, keeps us from taking any action at all. And this group is meant to sort of smash through that and let you at least be able to take one hour of really focused action for multiple campaigns. And you're doing the most updated steps, the most updated actions that the longtime activists really need you to do right now in order to get them to the next step in this longer strategy that again is for you too, it's for all of us. I think that's really, that and, and what Ella was saying about um, the the calls are logged. I mean, we that's how change happens. <laughs> you know, people that's how things change, that's how things happen. People pick up the phone and they call. And I think that that hasn't changed. Um, and so, but we have in the way we communicate. And this is a really interesting time um, for us to be one away from the very thing that we do. Um, also, um, at a time when we can't go, that we can't be out in the same way that we have been and in the world. And so, and, and we've become really reliant on those conversations that can happen on the phone. And so, and now that this is the time when your voice is needed in, in this space. And, and it's a place where you can, um, you can make an actual difference. So um, I'm really grateful to have you three here and also that you've done this um, in general. I mean, I know that your focus is on uh, these organizations, but this is, uh, this, is a, this is a special thing that you have created for our community and in a way that we can all get involved. Speaking of amplifying, We've heard Make the Road. Can you, if, if folks see this, because it kind of stays up on our page and people tune in as they see it, um, uh, folk, other organizations that, that people should be supporting, um, coming out for, you know, working hard for, what are the other uh, organizations you can, you can plug right now? Well, I mentioned Jews for Racial and Economic Justice. Uh, Jay mentioned Housing Justice for All, who we're calling for on Friday, uh, Make the Road New York. Um, we've also been in touch with um, DRUM, and uh, I know there are other organizations, uh, Natasha, uh, you've been in touch with some others as well. 
Uh, yeah, we've also been talking to Adhikar. Um, we've been talking to also just various folks who are connected to multiple organizations. Um, actually, uh, for those who aren't part of Amplifying Activists Together already, um, I'm putting this one link. Well, maybe that's in the private chat. But anyway, um, it's all of our resources. Thank you. Um, it's all of the resources sort of in a like comprehensive digest with um, linked uh, campaigns and each campaign page highlights uh, the organizations that we're following. Um, so you can also go to that one page, it's tinyurl.com slash AAT resources, and it links to budget justice and cancel rent and fund excluded workers and repealing the walking wall trans ban. And then from each of those pages, we give you a little blurb about the organization and link there so that you can also just go down that rabbit hole and get really involved with these organizations that are doing incredible work for these campaigns and also for more for like way more we're just trying to distill into currently active um campaigns and really urgent steps that need to be taken but they're all doing great work for many different issues and caring caring majority rising i think is the um they're going to working on you know uh they work on issues related to domestic workers and health care and so uh, it's another organization that we're keeping our eye on um and i would just add communities united for police reform mm -hmm. is the coalition that we were amplifying in um june working on the budget justice and so when the new york city budget comes around again um mm -hmm we will certainly be lobbying our city council members to cut uh, fund the NYPD. Yeah, and, and Communities United for Police uh, police Reform, they're you know, an ongoing co coalition that responds <laughs> to police violence in the city. And you know, there was another uh, police shooting that happened in Philly that uh, you know, there's like a rally going on later, uh, potentially. So uh, I think that, um, just like if folks want to get involved by going out on the ground, if they feel safe in outdoor protests, a lot of these organizations ask for people are asking for people to show up too. So part of our implication is saying like we are not organizing people to necessarily go out, but we want to lift up that that is also a thing that you can do if you feel safe doing that. Um, well, thank you all for being here. Uh, theater ending wasn't something that any of us anticipated. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully it won't be gone forever. But in the in the meantime, um, I think this is a this is a important thing to be doing with with the time that we have right now in in a bizarre turn of events that has led us here. So thank you for taking this uh, difficult moment and turning it into something positive an hour a week, it's uh, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. So we're grateful for you for being here. And uh, and if you've seen the URLs below, so check them out and just join in. It's not, it's not gonna, it's not, it's not a lot of a commitment right now. I know everybody is, have a lot, has a lot going on, but you can, you can do this. And if you're feeling, knock, knock on wood, if you're feeling good next Wednesday, maybe turn that into doing something on Friday so that you can keep feeling good. Um, so thank you all three of you for being here. Thanks, Maria. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, let me see if I can do this. I can do this. Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so if you want to get involved um, in uh, amplifying activists together, you can check out these URLs that we put up on this on this hour. Please look at the resources page. Make the calls. It won't take you long. Participate in the hours. Spend some. Spend. Dedicate yourself to this because it's going to make you feel feel empowered. And as we continue to move forward, we are in the final throes of our Fast and Furious countdown. The Fast and Fast and Furious is a long running tank series that started four years ago. We're celebrating the anniversary of it, and it allows artists, tank artists, to make short form works in response to current events. And it is all leading up to uh, this Tuesday where we have Fast and Furious election night. So if uh, if you have a short form work that you wanna do, that you want to submit uh, virtually on CyberTank, you can still do that. Um, you just go to uh, www.thetanknyc.org 
uh, for more information about how to participate, just go to the Fast and Furious countdown and it tells you really easily how to do that. And um, yeah, we, uh, we're gonna keep, keep on counting down. Um, we have uh, programming through the weekend, all with politically driven um, uh, themes. So check it out and we will see you on the next Cyber Tank Variety Show. Hey, Megan, please do something nice for yourself today. Just have a, just do one, one thing, one thing nice for yourself. Okay. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>